All right, so let's start off the second half. Who's excited? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm pretending I can't hear you. Okay. Our first speaker leading off the second half is Lindsay Blackwell, a PhD student at University of Michigan's Social Media Research Lab. Let's hear it for Lindsay. We all know an internet troll when we see one. Trolls, those treacherous bottom feeders, the sociopaths and miscreants who haunt the darkest corners of our web. But what is a troll, really? First, we need to clarify our language. A brief history lesson. Before Facebook, before Twitter, before MySpace, LiveJournal, AOL Instant Messenger, there was Usenet, a worldwide bulletin board system and the predecessor of our modern online forums and threads. Trolling, in its original sense, is a fishing practice in which a baited line is drawn slowly through the water in the hopes of catching a bite. Early internet trolls on Usenet would post inflammatory or intentionally foolish remarks in the hopes of getting responses. In our today's internet, it is more important than ever to distinguish this relatively harmful behavior of trolling from more serious forms of abuse. 4chan wasn't trolling Jennifer Lawrence when they posted her private photos. Gamergate isn't trolling feminist game, game critics. People weren't trolling Amanda Todd, Jessica Laney, Megan Meyer, Ryan Colligan, countless other teens who took their own lives after suffering substantial online abuse at the hands of their peers. These are intentional acts designed to intimidate or shame their victims into silence. Online abuse has serious offline consequences for its victims, and referring to these behaviors as trolling only undermines the types of harm that they cause. It's important to remember that these behaviors are not happening because of the internet. Each and every day, we use technology to collaborate, to empathize, to find jobs, to fall in love. The internet can be an awesome place. Humans just aren't always awesome people. We lie, cheat, steal, we wage wars, we break hearts. Humans have been awful to each other since the very beginning. All technology does is amplify both our best and worst behaviors. And this is why we must stop characterizing online abusers as the shadowy villains who dwell in the seedy underbelly of our web. Abusers are everywhere, and they can be impossible to find, but they are everyday internet users, not anomalies. In 2014, a woman discovered that her husband of six years had been telling teenage girls on Tumblr to kill themselves, calling them ugly, fat, stupid. My husband is a nice, gentle man, she said. I never thought this is something he would partake in. Earlier this year, feminist writer Lindy West famously confronted her cruelest troll, a man who created a Twitter account pretending to be her dead father. He used a stolen photograph and sent Lindy tweets telling her how disappointed he was in her. But the troll reached out. It finally hit me, he said. There's a living, breathing person who's reading this shit. I'm done being a troll, and I wish you the best. Said Lindy, it was frightening to realize how normal he was. But this is the exception, not the rule. Most online abusers never take responsibility for their actions, leaving technology users to fend for themselves. But online harassment is not a technology problem. It's a human problem, and it's a problem that we must work together to solve. The oft-repeated refrain, don't feed the trolls, might have worked well back in the days of Usenet, when the consequences of trolling amounted to little more than a waste of your time. But it isn't enough now. But it's only the internet, you might think. Just log off. That's not good enough either. We exist online. Many of us make our livings online. We live our lives online. And by refusing to acknowledge the harm that these behaviors cause, we're doing nobody any good. Social media sites often recommend blocking abusive users or flagging abusive behaviors that you may see in your feeds. But to evade a block on Twitter, for instance, requires little more than logging out or simply continuing your abuse through an alternate account. Former Twitter CEO Dick Costolo admitted, we suck at dealing with abuse. We've sucked at it for years. And though we want the internet to remain a free and safe forum, we can, must stop protecting speech that affects and harms other users. Victims of online abuse are not protected by our legal system either. Kelsey McKinney was sent repeated rape threats, accompanied by a photo of her childhood home. 
The responding officer told her to calm down. What's Twitter? said another. We must do more. As technology designers and users, as humans, we must do more. We must work together to protect our online spaces, to preserve some semblance of decency. Remember, online abusers don't just lurk in the darkest corners of the net. In order to solve harassment online and off requires a significant cultural change, one we must take seriously if we ever wish to illuminate the darkness. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay.